Uh, this is Vic from Drop Spotlight. We're here with John Rice Davies, hit actor from the hit movie Bad Cupid. Hey, John, how's it going today? Well, as far as Cupid's concerned, we're coming up to that time of the year, St. Valentine's Day, Ooh. when people celebrate the notion that marriage and happiness and joy are unique to them. Let me tell you, as Cupid, I've been watching it for many thousands of years, and the mating habits of humans bore me, repulse me, <laughs> and make me laugh. <laughs> Ooh, so all those years, it must have gotten you more into the, the bar scene now. <laughs> oh, yes. Drink is a necessary condition for, uh, for assisting humans to live happily ever after. <laughs> yeah, yes. In fact, I, th I think I shall, I shall just take scotch into intravenously from now on. Unfortunately, being a god, my capacity for drink is almost unlimited. You know, Bacchus is a cousin, um, so uh, you understand. It's we all, we try to keep it in the family. Of um, course, of course. I mean, my mother Venus. Well, she. She, she put it out quite a bit, let's face it. And she's still a good looker after all these years and still putting it out. <laughs> Mars, of course, my dad, well, allegedly my dad, well, what can I say? You know, in between wars, he whores. Um, it's, it's not an attractive thing. And of course, head of the family, Zeus himself, will jump anything that moves, still. Still. Oh, you must have used a lot of uh, liquid courage to be able to say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't mind if he strikes me with this thunderbolt. He knows that I've got this job. I've been doing it now for many thousands of years, and I am bored stiff with it. Or unstiff with it, perhaps, would be the more apposite quotation. Oh, yeah. Uh, um... Yes, yes. Misogyny is uh, is misanthropy and misogyny mm -hmm. meet in Cupid. Mm. Oh, yes. And I see they have created a movie about you uh, being able to correspond in the area to help out a couple of loved ones. Could you tell us a little bit more about that documentary they have about you? Uh, yes. Well, it's, you know, this is this is the. This is an age of reality TV, and it was just a day in the life of Cupid, you know, meeting up with uh, a bunch of people in New York who were intending to spend the rest of their lives with the wrong people and trying to spend the rest of their lives with the right people. And I help out in my characteristic, inimitable friendly sort of way <laughs> oh yes we saw that a lot and a little bit of spats of blood on the and that restroom scene <laughs> ah well you know who hasn't bled for love and if you haven't i'll make you <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and how do you choose that uh that lovely person or lovely person to help in that situation is it just a dart on the wall or you uh, see it's something that we it's, don't see. It's, it's 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 an administrative detail. It, you know, the, sometimes the office screws up. You know, but uh, or maybe I don't bother to read the note in full. You know, it just it it. You know, after a while, the fun has gone out of things. You've got to ring the changes in order to you know to facilitate true love, and I I don't mind kidnapping somebody and ramming a, a gun in their face to make them realize that this is not the woman they should marry. You know, this is some, there's a fine English poet um, who actually was poet laureate. Uh, um, and he wrote a wonderful line, loves the big boss at whose side forever slouches the shadow of the gunman. <laughs> wow. Very powerful. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> we should monetize that, that. That was a man called C. Day Lewis and his son. 
The young master day Lewis is uh, quite an accomplished young actor. Hmm. Ooh, interesting. Is that the next person you're going to be helping out soon? <laughs> oh, would that I could. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I, I, I think my, my, um, uh, my, my days of, as Cupid are really very limited on the screen. Uh, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> but, I, but you know, I mean, the character is such an interesting one, uh, and you can go anywhere in time with him. I do hope that we have a sequel or two out of this. I think, I think it would be right, great fun. I mean, wouldn't it be fun to have Cupid? called in as a technical advisor on the marriages of King Henry VIII, for instance. Yes, uh, that would be very unique. Uh, it, it might drive Cupid a little bit insane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we'll put the king in his place. Hmm. Yeah, I keep telling him, count on daughters, count on daughters. I've got to have a son to succeed. Henry, Henry, you haven't got, you haven't got the, 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 the bullets in the, in, in the, in the wad, you know, for, for making sons. Of course I am, you know who I am. I am the King of England. Henry, you may be the King of England, but let's face it, you're no great shifter in bed. What do you mean? How dare you? Uh, you've been listening to my wife again? I'll have her killed. <laughs> um, yes. Oh, the conversations are endless, aren't they, really? Um, oh, yeah. You could probably do a puppet show for King Henry, you know, just so he can understand the whole situation. <laughs> But did you, did you like the film? Uh, yes, it was very surprising. I, I watched it three times. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, oh, yeah. Like, there's and, so and, much subtle in, in, in the beginning to the end where you're like, wow, everything connected. Yes, it does. It does. Um, and and uh, you get that nice little bit right at the end where, uh, where the young lady that I've made friends with walks into the cafe and I walk in afterwards and turn and and along comes another young lady. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and she was the butt of the joke by her mother, and, I mean, mother or grandmother in the middle scene. I was like, huh? And it just popped out. I was like, wow, they included that part. It was amazing story writing and the usage of that. Yes, exactly. Exactly it is. Um. It's a good script. They're a good team. They were lovely young actors. And, um, you know, uh, I, I love working in America anyway. Um, but it, it's even more fun when sometimes you get into places that you don't normally think of as being filmmaking places. Uh, Buffalo, New York is, 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 is a place that I visited. But I've never had the chance of working there before, and it was it was real fun. It was really fun. Uh, and I thought about it, it brought more of a real feeling just because the actors are like, "Well, we're from this little area," and it just felt more real. Like you're yeah. you're like down the street from these guys, and they're experiencing that, and you're just like, "Oh, I got to take another sip of the beer." Here comes that person again, <laughs> drooling over that girl. <laughs> <laughs> but the actors yeah. and actresses did a phenomenal job. And you did a phenomenal job as Archie. It was like, wow, you could feel the emotion. You could feel the pain. He's trying to help him, like, see the light. But at the same time, he's like, he used that reverse psychology, like, oh, you, we'll help you get her. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, kidnapping, hmm, brutality, uh, all part of the daily work of love, isn't it, really? I mean... What can one say? You earn that paycheck. You bet uh, Cupid's out there. They're all looking like, what is he doing right now? Ah, uh, well, you know, love is uh, uh Yep, Cupid's the name and love's the game. But uh, if you're playing it with me, look out. <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty cool like let's say you did say like we should do another uh 
bad cupid movie imagine like not only from the king henry side going back in history but how about the history of movies and television did you have done like a past character like you feel like maybe i'll go into that genre and see if it could help them out well you know that there are always a number of parts one would like to have played i i i, I did rodriguez in shogun and Ooh. I, I did once sketch out a a Rodriguez in later life uh, uh, story, but, you know, an old man shipwrecked on a shore, uh, having lost the black ship, and uh, uh, and uh, I, I think it would uh, it would have been a great sequel. One of the things that that uh, that I feel that I'd love to have another crack at is um, Leonardo da Vinci in Star Trek Voyager. Since Ooh. they're doing a new Voyager, I, 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 I wonder, if, well, maybe I should try and talk to somebody about it. It just occurred to me the other day, you know, I'd like, you know there's, there's still a little bit of mileage to be had out of that character. Uh, and I would love to do it. Um, but then there are so many, you know, so many wonderful parts and wonderful characters and things like that to be played, and uh, <laughs> and, and not much time to do it, and not much opportunity right at the moment. I had five films to do last year. I managed to do a tiny part in one of them. That was it. I've got five films to do this year, um, and some glorious parts in there, uh, which I not really allowed to talk about but um uh oh yeah there are a couple i mean uh, I, it's well known that that um darwin in malibu for instance is uh is waiting to be made um and that's a very inter exciting strange surreal film about darwin and Heck Huxley, who was the great champion of Darwin, and Bishop Wil Wilberforce, who was the great opponent of Darwin. And they're all meeting together uh, in Malibu in a beach house a hundred years after they're dead. Um, and there are some good arguments to be had there. And, uh, you know, and, and and those arguments are the arguments that actually shape modernity and modern thinking and modern politics as much as anything. Very exciting. I wouldn't mind checking that out too, because this is very interesting, you know, because the, the arguments yeah. themselves, 100 years afterwards, they could mm -hmm. either be like, haha, I won, or be like, you know what, maybe I should have done this differently. Maybe I should have added that in that situation. So, very interesting. Well, you know, you could, uh, obviously we are, most of us really are Darwinian. Darwin won the argument, I think, intellectually. I, I, I don't think creationism holds water. But when you destroy creationism, you don't just destroy a whole intellectual framework, you destroy a moral order and a framework. And, you know, uh, you could argue that Darwin is as responsible for the rise of Hitler uh, and, and, and Stalin as, as anybody. Um, that would be an interesting argument. Yes, big time. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you could have said, well, you know, the consequences of discovery are whatever the consequences are, but it's important to make the discovery. You have to, you know, we are a, a curious animal. We need to know about our origins. And the, the, I mean, that great uh, Gauguin painting, which is titled, uh, Who Are We? Where Are We Going To? Where Did We Come From? is the beginning of modernity in, in art, in a way. It's, you know, that endless questioning of our origins, our destiny, uh, our natures. And 
and that intellectual side of our natures, uh, the curious side of our natures, you know, must be exercised. And we are, we are extraordinary animals, and we're doing remarkably well. Um, oh yes, uncovering yeah. our histories, and we're learning more about that. I believe that's uh, not only unlocking potentially a lot of that, but it'll also like we look back at our ancestors and be like, you have some probably had better technology than we had, but we use a different way because I got lost throughout history. Someone didn't write it down or education faltered somewhere and it wasn't recorded. And then when the, these discoveries are made, it's astonishing what our ancestors have done. Yes, indeed. I mean, a hundred thousand years ago, there were at least five human species on the planet, at least five. Uh, even 40,000 years ago, there were probably at least three, possibly four species of humans on the planet. You know, um, you know one, one gene in the wrong place and, you know, uh, Homo Neanderthal may have, may have triumphed rather than Homo sapiens sapiens. Mm -hmm. That is true. Um, or that the Denisovans. Um, their their ability to to um, it, it, to use oxygen more efficiently at high altitudes, um, or the or the hobbits, Homo floresiensis, <laughs> um, could have had a world of little flora uh, of little hobbits. Yes, with a king. <laughs> 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 Yes, um, it's it's a. Um, I I was at dinner once with a a, a, a real English lady, um, and and um, she was an older and rather imperious lady, and the subject of Darwin and evolution came up, and she listened to me expounding the virtues of Darwinism impatiently, and finally she said, Mister Rhys Davis. Your family may be descended from apes, but mine most certainly are not. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was uh, was was wonderful. Yes, I I I I I, 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 I beg to differ with. I, I didn't actually tell her that. Actually, she and I were related many times over, if we go back a thousand years, if you go back two and a half thousand years, we have so many, you and I have so many uh, relations in common. Um, but I, I, I didn't think that she would, uh, she was up to, to facing that uncomfortable <laughs> realization. Ah, ah, ah. Well, she's probably thinking like, oh no, did I get my ears like that too? <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you want fans to know or experience from uh, watching Bad Cupid? What do you want them to experience? I want you to go in and enjoy it and uh, and laugh, um, and then don't hesitate to send letters to the producer saying where it could have been made better. And uh, and 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 you can also abuse me as well. <laughs> but remember, I'm Cupid. I'll live longer than you. And believe me, if you think your love life is a mess now, <laughs> trust me, I can make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for this interview thank you for the intellectual conversation and guys and gals out there check out this movie and be shaped shifted and changed throughout this movie listen to this wise man and uh, <laughs> listen i know that these are rough times but learn to laugh again and 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 learn to love again and we'll get through this we're a very inventive species we got through the ice age. <laughs> COVID is nothing, nothing. Oh yes, wise words right there, guys. <laughs> we'll see you at the cons.
Thank you.